When one approaches High Clear for the first time, it's, um, it's the scale of it that takes one's breath away. When it rises up there out of this dip, so you're just coming up the drive, you think, wow. I mean, every time I go up there, I get a thrill. I took photos, I have selfies, of me in my black tie with Downton in the background. It's hugely iconic building and show. You know, that was a big moment for me, getting out of my trailer and a driver saying, would you like a lift a set? And me going, actually, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this one's for me, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna walk up the drive. It's an astonishing, I mean, it's a, you know, a sort of gothic folly in a way, isn't it, really? I mean, it, it sits on top of medieval sort of uh, origins, uh, but there's this strong, you know, Palace of Westminster plonked down in the, in, in the countryside. And looking around, you can barely see another dwelling fr from it. I think there's one building way yonder in the distance you can see. This building was put up by 1842 in a bit of a hurry, and they got Barry, who had just built the new Houses of Parliament. And oddly, because I don't think it would happen today, they built a Gothic cathedral of a building in the form of Westminster and the palace thereof, which is, you know, oh, sort of nothing to do in one sense with the Victorians and a throwback completely to the great age of English cathedral building. And this structure here, Downton Abbey, is by the same man. And I think you get the same sense of gosh when you see it in the middle of the English countryside. First house I went to was High Clare Castle, and we thought, well, we'd better look on due, due diligence. And um, we probably visited 40 houses um, online and photographs. We looked at 100 in, all over. And we had a meeting, and uh, everybody said, what's, what's their favourite? We said, do you know what? It's, it's High Clare. Part of the reason why we chose High Clare, which is a, a marvellous architectural statement of aristocratic superiority. You know, it has mottos running around the top and you go in and there's tiers of coats of arms of every countess reaching to the sky, you know. And it, it was all kind of do 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 you know. And it seemed to me rather a nice irony to play out the decline of the British upper classes against this grandiloquent background. It's almost like casting another part. It's the lead part. And I think that's rather than just picking a location, which you know we normally do, it actually was a, was a cast member. And I think Brian's, you know, episode one scene, whatever, three or four, when Brian beautifully devised the, the steady cam right through the house, was just introducing another character. And I think it was really, really important to do that. It's a very good narrative house because although it's very large, it's very straightforward. You go in, there's the central hall, uh, the library, the drawing room, the painted room, the dining room, a door leading to the kitchens and servants' rooms in the main set of the hall. You don't have to wiggle off down some passage. So that within a couple of episodes, uh, the, the audience absolutely understand how this house works. The interior rooms are, are all diff they differ. You know, the, the, the libraries, one of the great libraries, it's a French drawing room, it's a sort of Italianate hall. There's the great Van Dyck in the... So each room had its own identity, whereas some, some of those houses are quite samey in their rooms. Beautiful though they are, they, are, they are, can, can be quite samey. We've grown up, you know, the last six years watching it on te as a home, so my impression of it is, a, is of a fire that's always lit and a dog running around, and it is homely. Those that have survived are struggling to survive now because they've got roofs and they're very expensive to maintain and they've got paintwork and carpets that all need to be maintained and that's pretty tough. Imagine that literally hanging over you like, oh God, I can't do the roof this year. Yeah. That's a mill, <laughs> you know. There's some serious, serious expenses for those kind of properties. A family could live here quite comfortably, but you'd need a lot of staff. And I think that that's the reminder of these great buildings. These places are too big. The next generation, their children, they, they reinvented it. They moved out of the slot kitchen and back into the big kitchen. The difference being they took a sofa and a television and their children with them. And they started to live in these places differently. But it was also reinvigorated. It was also renewed. And now I think uh, these houses are in 
really much better shape. For me, I think one of the interesting uh, storylines that we have this year is where they decide to do an open house, where they invite the general public to come and look round Downton. I mean, for, for me, when we were filming that, it, it really sent like a shiver down my spine because you actually suddenly think, well, when you go to Highclere Castle now, this is exactly what happens. There's a queue of people down the drive waiting to get in and look round the house. Well, in opening up Downton Abbey as part of the story, we get a glimpse to the reality for Highclere Castle, which is open to the public. It's clearly benefited a great deal from a very famous TV show. And people want to come and look around this building and to have a look at it. Well, I was told by one of the staff there uh, that um, during our first year of filming, they had something like 60 coach loads of visitors. That was their average. By the time we came back to film series two, they had 600. And now you can't get a ticket. I tried to get a ticket the other day. I can't get a ticket for my friend. So uh, I think it's, as, uh, it's been mutually beneficial, let's put it that way. I think the show has done an enormous amount for the house. Um, it's put it on the map. Um, uh, even more than it was before. It's given it an enormous financial boost, not just from hiring the house, but from people wanting to use it for weddings and all that. And I think um, both ways it's been very beneficial. I think it's been a big part of Downton's success, actually. It, it establishes immediately who that family is. That's iconic now. It's one of the stars, definitely. I don't think that anyone who has watched the show will ever forget the outline of this building. It is now world-renowned. <laughs>